A shadow grows on the wall behind you, swallowing you in darkness. It is almost here. What is it? What if it's the Demogorgon? Oh, Jesus, we're so screwed if it's the Demogorgon. It's not the Demogorgon. The Demogorgon! Oh, oh, we're in deep, we're deep. Hey, everybody, Tom Marks here with John Ryan Buddy. to unbox. Buddy. <laughs> the, all of you, the Dungeons and Dragons Stranger Things starter set. No, thank we're you. not. Okay, no, thank right. you. I appreciate that. Uh, John, yeah. tell me about this. What is it? Uh, so this is exactly what you just said. It is a starter set for Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition, uh, with the sort of Stranger Things uh, license tied in for it. And yeah, it's a great way to kind of get into the game if you don't know D and D super well, or maybe if you're not into the. Uh, sort of hard fantasy realm of things, um, or if you just really like Stranger Things, uh, right. it's a cool way to sort of get a little bit more out of that world. Now, D&D uh, &D is mostly in the mind. Yes, it's but, very uh, much based on imagination. This is like it's, empty, man. It's pretty empty. <laughs> so I think, yeah, if we, if I was like a 12 year old kid and I opened this box, I'd be like, oh, you know, D&D, and then there's like, oh, okay. But there's there's more in here there than is, that. There's, there's a lot more to it than just this. Mostly um, uh, what anybody who's played D&D before knows, paper, lots of paper. So much paper, oh my god. <laughs> so this is the starter set. So, yes. It seems like this is basically just the so, normal D&D starter set, yeah, so but with some Stranger Things twists and words and pictures. And exactly, that sort of yeah. Stuff. So you've got character sheets, you've got um, the court, like the rule book, the starting rules, basic rules, um, and then you've got a starter campaign, which is uh, supposed to be Mike's adventure that he wrote for the boys in uh, the first episode of the show so many years ago. And this is really the the meat and potatoes of this set, I yeah. think. It's it's what it's called the Hunt for the Tessel Hydra Adventure Book uh, D and D campaign by Mike Wheeler who apparently has a droopy E, whatever he that is. He somehow means. managed to write on his notebook in fridge magnets. Yes. And I'm really proud of him for figuring <laughs> out that science because I sure as hell can't do that. But the, the inside, and we're gonna try to avoid spoilers as we can, but the inside of this book is actually really cool. Uh, you were pointing out, it's like, Faux a notebook? It's yeah, like it's, it's really, I, I really like the way that it's set up. Like, um, I think it's kind of, I think the campaign itself, I read through it, won't spoil it for you, um, but it kind of does that thing that I was kind of hoping they wouldn't, but they do, where they uh, sort of touch on themes and plot lines from the show, as opposed to just having it be, you know, Mike's D&D campaign, which I totally get, it's totally fine. Like, it's still, like, from reading through it, like, it still sounds like a fun adventure. Um, but there are going to be those moments where you're like, if you've played a bunch of D&D before, like, you're going to be like, this doesn't sound like D&D. It, it, it seems to operate in this interesting realm where it is Dungeons and Dragons. It is just Dungeons and Dragons. It's not like sci-fi Dungeons and Dragons or right. anything like that. But it is, f fans of the show will have a lot to, to recognize. There yeah, absolutely. Well. Like that's the, I think that's the big takeaway from it. It's like, yes, it's not necessarily like, traditional advanced Dungeons and Dragons or even the earlier sets that they were using, Adventures. Um, it's its own story, but it also references the shows in a lot of ways that fans of it will really appreciate, I think. Um, like the great thing in, in the rule book. No, it, it, it's a manual. Is now all, all the text here is just basically the basic rule set for D&D, but if you look at all of the art for it, instead of having like fantasy illustrations, it's all art from the show. And then um, all the little examples of like, Dungeon Master says this, yeah, it's all exactly. like, Mike says this, and Lucas responds, and it's, right. it's cute that way. Yeah. Um, and, and similarly, we have these character sheets that uh, are seem to be based loosely off of yeah. the characters from the game, yeah. or so from, the, from the show. The characters from the show's game characters. Cool. I think that's how it works. I'm glad we got through that together. Yeah. So yeah, you've got like uh, Dustin's dwarf bard in there. You've got uh, Will's Will wizard, Will the Wise. Fireball! Will um, the Wise. Lucas's ranger, I think he played a ranger. I say. believe so. Um, and yeah, and then you've got a bunch of, uh, a couple of extra. So yeah, there's also a human paladin and a wood elf cleric, which yeah. I think are just sort of rounding out the party because just yeah, a if, bard, a ranger, and a wizard would be a, Maybe a harder campaign to yeah, start. Yeah, I, I think it's rare that you'll see a group of people starting a D and D campaign with uh, three people. I mean, you can right. for sure, but it's a lot easier. Uh, what I do like is, in differentiation from the original starter set for D and D Five E, 
that it's a paladin instead of a fighter. So you get someone, if someone doesn't want to play a cleric, you get someone who's a great mix of both. Hmm. Um, so it's like, okay, well, our party needs a healer, but also someone who can smash things real good. Uh, and let's move on from the paper. There's a couple of physical no, like things in here. I know, the paper. The paper's where the magic happens, Tom. The paper Tom. is where the magic happens. You also have a set, though, of dice. The dice are... are where the random bad things happen. <laughs> and random good things. And random good things, but, but let's be honest, it's a lot more random bad things. Uh, it seems like a pretty standard set of uh, six dice. Yep, I'm kind of surprised that they're not more stranger things. Yeah, maybe? they're just sort of this like... nice blue two-tone blue yeah, color. It's I nothing it, weird about them, though. The, the, for a perfectly serviceable set of dice. Yeah. Um, I kind of wish that like the numbers maybe were in the Stranger Things font, or like the color scheme was like black and red. Right. Um, but still, they're dice. Look, they roll, I got a 17, I probably hit. Not so, bad, yeah. yeah. did okay. Uh, well, the thing you're gonna be swinging at is these little guys. Yep, the There's... big reason that a lot of people bought this set, I'm willing to bet. Right, these uh, little fake uh, Demogorgon minis they're a little bit uh, rubbery. So yeah, these the are word? these are very soft, rubberized plastic, which is both a good and a bad thing, uh, depending on what kind of environment you're playing. Like if you're playing with kids, they're great because you can't really break them. Um, if you are someone who likes like really solid minis. One of the things I like is that one of them comes painted and sort of a little more detailed painted. there. Pa <laughs> painted with I big mean, air quotes. As, so as someone who like really enjoys painting minis, I'm glad that you have an unpainted option. Yes, and I, that's what I was gonna say is the other one is a, a little bit more base. You're probably gonna still need yeah. to do your own base coats and all that stuff if you're really getting into painting, but I like that they give you one ready right out of the box and one that's, you know, do your own Yeah, thing. and I think it's cool too, because like the, this is the Demogorgon from the show, which is, you know, we were talking about sort of how the, I, I know, I know, I know, but like, go, go the first it. time that I learned what Demogorgon in traditional D&D was, he's this massive, like, yeah, demigod, basically. Um, versus, you know, a, a face mouth man. <laughs> and that's the best, the best part about D&D is it all comes from up here. Yeah. So you just make it up. Exactly. Uh, this is, uh, what do you think so far, though, or overall? This is a cool little set. Uh, it is. I appreciate kind of the, the little fan service-y touches all throughout yeah. it. I, I always love, you know, seeing more people get into D&D because I think it's something that everyone should try at least once in their lives. Uh, and I think that this is a great way to do it if, you know, you've maybe been hesitant to try it before or if you don't really have a touchstone in that sort of world for it. I think this is a great reason to do it. It's a really good entry point. Yeah. And it also says in, in the back of the book, you know, once you're done with this campaign, you can move your characters up to level four and you can kind of continue on to other campaigns as well. So I like that it is, it is a starter set in the truest sense. Yeah, it is. And it's cool too because like, what I like is that they all, all the characters start at level three which kind of skips the bullshit levels, yeah. which is nice, though you won't be able to cast Fireball like Will did on the show, but it's fine. It was a seven. Huh? The wolf, it was a seven. The Demogorgon, it got me. You gonna get that pedantic with us? I am. <laughs> well, then I'm really petty, Tom, you, haven't you seen? You're a true D&D player. <laughs> you're gonna get pedantic oh, with no. it. Oh, <laughs> no. I mean that with all due respect and love. Speaking of D&D, if you want to see more of our D&D coverage, we have an incredible unboxing with Matthew Lillard oh opening God, up yes. this $500 treasure chest set of oh my just, God. it's really, really cool a set nuts. of D&D stuff. Yeah, like if this, this is the starter set, this was like the max level expert set. It was, it was crazy. It was it, really cool. I highly recommend you check it out. It's very, very impressive. And for more of our tabletop stuff in general, John did a playthrough of yep. both The Witcher tabletop RPG yep. and the Cyberpunk 2020, which is what the coming game 2077 is based off of. Yep. Uh, and so for everything D&D, &D, tabletop, Stranger Things, and all things nerdy, I guess, stick right here on IGN.